Greetings friend, entrepreneur, and fellow business builder. I'm marketing master Jim Ackerman and this is Good Bad and Ugly Ads, YouTube's first and only two-way interactive business building program where you get to improve your advertising skills so you can get more customers who will pay you more money more often the fastest, easiest, most cost-effective ways possible. If you're new to the program, here's how it works. Last week, we showed you an advertising specimen and invited all subscribers and viewers to comment below and tell us what you thought of the specimen. Is it good, bad, or ugly from a marketing perspective? I'm about to reveal to you what I, the marketing master, think of the ad and whether it's good, bad, or ugly. Once I've had my say, we'll show you another specimen that you'll have the opportunity to critique between now and next week's episode, and then I'll give you my take on whether I thought it was good, bad, or ugly. Don't forget, you also have the opportunity to submit your own videos through the comments section where you can submit your own ads for the rest of us to take a look at and comment on, and we welcome you to do that. Now, let's take a look at the specimen that I showed you last week. As you can see, a number 10 window envelope where the window takes up most of the space. And through it, you can read the headline, James, join us at this special event. Complimentary meal will be provided. Was this a good, bad, or ugly effort? Here's my take. First of all, the idea of free food isn't a bad one. And I have seen enough of these enough times, specifically with Carver's involved, that my take is Carver's is probably reaching out to financial planners and the kinds of folks that do these kinds of events and suggesting to them this uh, kind of a, of a, a promotion. It's happened enough with enough different kinds of companies that there must be something about it that is working. Having said that, whether it's good, bad, or ugly or not depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If you want to get the most people possible into the event, I don't think this is a very good way to do it. Why? Because as soon as somebody looks at that, they know the whole story from their perspective, whether they want to do it or not. There's no intrigue. I don't have to open the envelope and read anything in order to figure it out. Where it could be a good ad is when I, the recipient, am actually in the market for the kind of help that they provide. If I am that kind of a person, I'm going to get, the, the, the promoter is going to get fewer people who will respond, but the people who do respond are going to be of higher quality because they will have already determined, hey, meal or not, this is something that I might be interested in. When you open up the envelope and you pull out the card, you can see what the menu is. So what do they have? They've got appetizers, bread, and house salad, but they also have fomoy mignon, uh, uh, grilled chicken, or grilled salmon. Those are some pretty nice choices. Finally, the sales letter itself. Again, this is an, a, an eight and a half by 14 sales letter and let's take a look at some of the specifics number one the top part was already committed to what you could see through the envelope so now we take that out of the equation and we're back to an eight and a half by eleven letter but as you can see they only use one side so one of the weaknesses is that they had a lot more space they could have played with and didn't take advantage of it. The headline is okay. The body copy is okay. It does have some visual tricks to pull you through the copy. You have options of four dinners to choose from or four days to choose from and you RSVP or reserve your spot by calling a number. Again, unless you're interested in what they have to offer, you're not going to dial that phone number. My main problem with this is the lack of information. They had more space here and the entire back that they could have used to give me more reasons to come to this. This is good if you only want the highest end, most 
pre-primed prospect. My problem with it is it doesn't probably reach broadly enough. There are probably people that they could get into the fold who would be willing to come to the dinner number one and be true prospects for their product, products, but they're leaving those folks on the table. So, if the promoter's goal is to only get those people who are ready to buy right now, and because of the cost of the meal, that might be the goal that they have, then the marketing master says this is good. If their goal is to broaden out and get a few more folks into the uh, funnel, if you will, to buy their products, then I would say this is bad, but it's not ugly. With that in mind, let's turn to our next advertising specimen that you'll have the opportunity to critique between now and our next episode. So I think you'll find that this specimen is a fun one. It's none other than Victoria's Secret, who is certainly fun for me. What is it? It's a nice self-mailer. You can take a look at it. And as an attractive picture on the front, it also has an offer on the front. The offer is repeated and maybe given in greater detail on the back or the address side with some additional information. It is boogered closed. And when you open it up, the first thing you see, of course, is three cards, and each one of those cards presents a specific offer. And then you open it up, and you see some more product. Interesting thing about this product, not a great deal of description about these products. But those are the pieces as they come. You tell me, is this one good, bad, or ugly? from a marketing perspective. Put your comments below and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends all about it. The more subscribers we get, the more feedback we get, the more useful it is to every single one of us here at Good, Bad, and Ugly Ads, where we help you get more customers who will pay you more money more often, the fastest, easiest, most cost-effective ways possible. See you next time. Thank you.